Hello folks and welcome to my first look at Football Manager 2019 Touch on the Nintendo Switch. As you can see I have my Joy-Cons in hand, I'm not strapped into them, but I think for a game like Football Manager we should be safe. This is the fourth or fifth of these first look videos that we've done on Football Manager 2019. Now we've looked at the version on PC, we've looked at Touch on both PC and iPad, we've looked at mobile on an iPhone. And this, I think, should be the final release in the Football Manager 2019 batch of games. The Switch version. Obviously, as with all my other first looks, if this is the first time you've arrived at my channel because you're looking to find out more about Football Manager Touch on the Switch, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Have a little look around. We have daily Football Manager content here on the channel. And if you want to see more specific Switch Football Manager content, we need to get at least a 1,000 likes on this video to... To, to let me know that you're taking the Switch seriously. But as you can see, I've just loaded the game up for the first time. I've done nothing with it at all. Um, so we're just going to have a little bit of an explore, have a look around the different modes that are in the game, start a career, play a match, and just really have an explore around the game. So first impressions, we've got three options. We can start a new career, we can do a create a club, or we can do challenges. Let's have a look at what the challenges are now. Theoretically, these are going to be the same challenges that they've got on all the other versions of Football Manager Touch. Now, I know with the Touch version of FM last year, there was a lot of controls to do with the shoulder buttons and things on the controller. It wasn't just a case of moving the cursor around with the analog sticks and pressing buttons. So once we get started on a career, we should be able to explore more the different options that are in the game. But I'm gonna get started with a new save. I'm gonna pick Forest Green because that's the team that I'm managing at the moment in my non-lead to legend save on the channel. So we'll have a look at Forest Green, how they start off in FM19 Touch. And we'll do advanced setup to see what the options are. I, it, ah, here we go. Now we've got the, the different menu options. So shortcuts to do with the shoulder buttons. It takes a little bit of a while to get used to it. But certainly when you're playing in docked mode like I am at the moment so that I can capture the footage, it really is a time saver to be able to use the shoulder buttons and navigate around that way. Obviously, when you're playing in handheld mode, you can do it touchscreen the way that you do when you're on the, um, on the iPad or other tablets. Right, let's... Get set up. It looks like just like on the iPad version, you can only have three nations selected. What I'm not seeing on here is the option to do the cross sync saves with the PC version. So it looks like we've got no facility to do that on the Switch version, which is a little bit of a shame. But I mean, it's it's a console version, isn't it? I can understand wanting to do that between the iPad and the PC, but on the console, I think probably for a lot of people, if you're getting this on the console, it's probably going to be your main version of Football Manager, and there's not going to be much need to cross sync that across to a PC, but it's a feature I'd like to see them add in the future. Right, so let's have a look at these. We've got navigation menu is the left trigger, actions menu is the right trigger, and then everything else should be fairly obvious, I think, but I've got to remember, and obviously the the ZR button, the little trigger button there, that one's your, your equivalent of the space bar, that's the continue button. That's the one that I'm going to need most. So we'll just let this get set up and then we'll We'll move on and see what happens next. Right, so I need to get my character set up. Then I'm just going to stick my details in. Obviously, again, this is going to be one of those things that we m would be much easier to do on the on the touchscreen version. But for now, I mean, you can just navigate around the way you would on any other console. Um, oh, there's a little bit of sound on there as well. You've got the, the actual switch clicking going on. I've never played a football manager with the sound on before. This is, this is throwing me off entirely. Oh, I'm not particularly experienced on the touch version so we'll leave it as that my appearance i'll just leave as it is i don't need to fiddle too much with appearance for now um and we will save in a save slot we want to save in the top save slot because it wants us to save in the middle one and i want to know why right we'll just get that saved uh, it's already bugging me that i didn't use capital letters on my the first letters of my name so we are in, and just to test how these buttons work, it's the short, various shoulder buttons, isn't it? So if you press the, the left shoulder button, it brings that menu up, which you can then navigate around using the D-pad, which makes it a lot simpler to use than trying to move a cursor around on the screen. Um, you can use the other shoulder button to bring up a context-sensitive action menu. So... At the moment, because it's got me selected on screen, it allows me to look at my own contract so I can resign, I can go on holiday, that usual stuff. 
um, and then the right trigger is continue. So if I hit that, is that going to move me through my inbox? It is. Excellent stuff. So just find out a little bit more about Forest Green. As with all the other versions of the game, it's got all of the new tutorial induction system in. It's got the new tactic system. It's got the FM Touch version of the new training system. If we ha if you haven't seen the FM Touch version of training yet, I have put it in my other FM Touch videos if you want to look at it in more detail. Um, but if we say, okay, I'm going to do the training myself, um, ZR to confirm that instruction, and then you literally just pick what your training focus would be. So if we want our training focus to be, I don't know, set pieces, then it will focus on set pieces until you tell it. Otherwise, it still has the training ratings, but it's a lot less intensive than the version on the full on the full FM game. But it's exactly the same one that's been in all the other versions of Touch. Um, Tactics-wise, we have got the new tactic system, which is a very cool addition to Touch. Um, so we can pick a tactical style. Now I'm going to pick the same tactical style that I use in my in my forest green save that I'm using at the moment. Just to note as well, I'm using the right analog stick to move up and down on this menu without having to move the cursor around. So I can still move the cursor as well, um, but I can then use the... I have to be hovered over it, and then I can use the analog stick to move up and down. So little little tricks for improving the navigation and once you get the hang of it navigation does become a lot easier i played a fair bit of fm touch on the 2018 version on the switch and eventually got used to the controls and ended up using the even when i was using it in handheld mode using the joy cons more than the touch screen stuff because i don't know the switch it's a bit of an awkward size for touch screen it's very small and with my giant big fat fingers it was quite hard to actually get it to do what I wanted to do using the touchscreen, and I ended up preferring this system. So we've picked one of the new tactical presets. We've got the direct counter-attacking system. We're doing a 4-3-3. Let's hit quick pick. Um, that's a perfectly acceptable name for the tactic. You go for it if you want to name my tactic. I was just trying to hit quick pick, so obviously missed. Um, we don't want to show that again, and then we can hit Y to confirm the message from Scott Lindsay. And that is the team that it is selecting for us. There's a few names I recognise that are still around in my save. Um, but there's no left winger. No left winger. Very upsetting. Let's close the tactics menu down. We're just going to have a little bit of explore around the rest of the stuff that we've got on here before we get into a match. So we've looked at tactics. We've looked at training. Team report is exactly the same as it is on the full fat version of the game. With a team report induction if you want to learn how to use that within the game which is a very handy feature to have on staff again we've got inductions on all these areas i'm not going to go through all the inductions if you want to see the inductions in full flow i have got separate videos of them elsewhere on the channel so you can have a look at the inductions running through well, that just shows the different staff that we've got at the club um, training we've already looked at schedule is exactly the same as it is on all versions of the game as is the competitions page um, and then scouting scouting induction again um, but I'm going to do my own scouting, confirm that, getting used to the Joy-Cons again. It's all coming back to me. So there are two players that we've got scouted at the moment. We can click on them. And this is where your context-sensitive context menus come in. So using the right shoulder button, um, I can then bring up my menu. There it is, which is only giving me miscellaneous at the moment. I oh, know. Is that what I want? Where's the... No, it's the left. Is it the left shoulder button? See, this is what I get for saying it's all coming back to me. It is the left one. So the left shoulder button brings you into the different menus that you would have had along the top of the screen in, in a PC version of the game. So we can have a look at um, this guy's history, for example. And let's have a look at his career stats. So again, I'm using the cursor to move around those menus, which is a really clunky way to do it. Um, because what you can actually do, if you hit the button, and then you can use the D-pad to move around, and it just becomes a lot easier. So we can have a look at his scout report. Similar system to what you've got on the PC, which is very handy. But we're not going to buy any players now. What we do want to do is have a look to see what the match engine looks like on the um, on the Switch version. That's what we're all here for. Let's fast forward to the point where we can play our first match. We should have a friendly arranged very soon. Let's have a little look when our first friendly is. We have a friendly in seven days' time. So I'm going to, using the magic of time travel, fast forward to that first friendly against Frome. We're going to play it and we're going to have a look at what the match engine looks like.
Right, we've made it through to match day, as you can see, for teams that they have the licenses for. We do have the, the license kits in the game, which is a very cool little feature on a on a cut down version of the game on touch. Um, but we are gonna we're gonna pick our team, so let's hit continue through to our team selection. I'm just gonna do a quick pick. We're not gonna get too bogged down in the, the tactical side of things. We're not bothered about winning the game. We just want to look at what the match engine looks like. You can see that as with other versions of touch as well at the top of the screen here, you've got the instant result button. We're not gonna use that, but it's a handy thing to use, especially when you get yourself stuck in one of those mid table mediocrity seasons and you just wanna get it over with. You can you can instant result your way through a lot of the season. Um, why is he is he coming to us? So he's joining us on the 1st of January. He must be here on loan at the moment, presumably. There we go. So captain's not been selected. That's fine. He can be our captain then. Let's get into the match. It's saving again. And hopefully the match engine is going to look super gorgeous. It looked very good last year. It's looked very good on the iPad version of FM Touch this year as well. And obviously we've seen massive improvements to the match engine on the PC version. So I have high hopes, but I've not seen it at all yet we're seeing this for the first time together as you can hear we have some match sounds in the background um i've quietened them down i'm going to leave them on because you know it's the switch i like to have a little bit of sound in the background when i'm playing a console game i may well have made them so quiet that you can't hear them i wasn't prepared for recording audio off of the switch when i started recording this video but let's get in to a match and have a little look at it so as with oh we've got yeah, it's just telling us about the match engine. That's fine. We don't need to learn about the match engine. So as with other versions of these first looks that I've done, we're going to have a look at the first half on the 3D match engine. We'll have a look at the second half on the 2D match engine so you can see both in full flow. First thing I'm noticing is it was it was running smoothly. There was no stuttering. There was no struggling, which you've sometimes had on versions of Touch in the past. To be fair, not on the Switch version, but certainly on lower performing tablets it can struggle a little bit at times but obviously the switch i mean it's a console that can run the likes of diablo and skyrim if it can get if it can run them it can run football manager and it is running the game very nicely as you can see and we scored a goal early on as well good old george williams he's good for me and not need to legend and clearly he's also very good in the switch version of the game as well which is rather handy but we'll have a look at the replay the replay's coming in from exactly the same angle which is not necessarily how I'd normally do things, but uh, we'll let the game off. We can we can live with having a replay in uh, from the normal angle. I'm expecting lots of goals in this game, so I don't I don't know who throw them are. So I'd like to think we're going to score an absolute ton of goals, but who knows? Our goalkeeper have we got Renato Sanchez in goal? I know it's probably not, but he's the only R Sanchez I know, and I like to occasionally pretend that I know something about football. Um, I also like the fact that you can see the full first 11 on the screen. Sometimes with how small the Switch screen is, I get a little bit concerned about not being able to see everything on the screen. But it's all on there. Oh, have we zoomed out? Or is the game... I think we were on director mode. So the game... Oh, it is. It's cutting to different shots. That's awesome. I never use director mode. But we'll leave it on director mode just to see what it looks like. It's quite cool watching what, slot, what shots it selects. Um, have we won a free kick here on the edge of the area? We haven't. And it's cleared. Are we going to concede a goal against one of the... I mean, what were they? A Tier 7 team, did it say, when it was loading up? We really can't be conceding a goal against them. We're not that bad a side. Here we go. Archibald down the left wing. Plays it over the top for Morris. There's nobody supporting him apart from Williams way over on the far side. So he decides to go it alone. And obviously it ends up straight at the keeper because the angle was so ridiculously tight. So another difference between this and the full version of the game, obviously in this area, we've only got two things um, that you can have selected. You can customise them, similar to how you can on other versions of the game. I didn't aim right. That's something I'll do on touch screen. I'll try again when we get out of this highlight because obviously using the all the little fine motions that you have to do with the cursor, they can be a little bit fiddly. It's the nature of the Switch. Remember, you're probably not going to be playing this a lot in docked mode on the TV. I certainly didn't last year. 90% of my play on the Switch version of Football Manager was all in handheld mode. And when you get to those moments where it does start to feel a little bit fiddly, you can just touch the screen. It's, it's the big thing, I think, that separates this from some of the previous console versions of Football Manager that we all know have been a bit ropey. Hard to see all the detail on the screen from far away, difficult to control. I think using the shoulder button interface, they've massively improved the control when you are docked. But the fact that when it does get annoying, you can just switch to the touch screen. 
it's um it's why i'm happy to see it on switch but wouldn't want to see it on xbox or playstation because i think it's just opening itself up to criticism if it goes onto a console where you don't have the option to just oh i can't do it let's just touch the screen but let's see if i can do this now there you go so we can pick the different options in there so i don't know if we want to see frome's formation for example we can have the frome formation on there and oh i've pressed the shoulder button by mistake we've got a free kick and have we scored again no it's back off the post and it's cleared so as we approach the second half we are gonna we are gonna have a fiddle with the with the the view so that we can get it into 2d i'm not entirely sure how we get that menu up presumably it's a left trigger situation let's have a little look so the match is going to carry on playing without us um i think what we're looking for have we scored again no options we probably want to be in options out here we go so as we go into the second half we're going to come off director we're going to go on to 2d classic and we're just going to up the speed a little bit i like the speed a little bit faster when we play on 2d and we'll accept those changes i think how do we accept the changes probably maybe that's pausing it we've scored again but we can't see the goal how do i accept these changes can we just go back to the pitch now there we go so we're in 2d on the pitch but we're going to see the goal in 3d very really handy it's from another corner it's mcgidley that's a lovely finish for a defender into the top corner and now we're going to get to have a look at things in 2d once we get into the second half but we'll have a look at the in-match tactic screen first so we're at badgers hill what a great name for a ground so if we have a look at tactics um you can adjust all your tactics the way you can in any other version of fm touch so i don't know if we want to take off this left winger and it's one of those things that ah there you go so you you click on the little drop down thing and then if we want to take archibald off um who are we going to bring on for him we've got let's sort this by role ability so our best I was going to say, it was telling me our goalkeeper was the best option. So let's bring Dale Grubb on. So he can come on for Theo Archibald. Substitution made. Easy peasy. No, don't discard my changes. Confirm my changes. Substitution made. Has the substitution been made? It has. Excellent. So second half in 3D. You do have the option, just like with other versions of Football Manager, to add the match stats and things on the screen. I'll level with you on a screen the size of the Switch one. I'm not putting my match stats on the screen. It's going to take up far too much valuable screen real estate. I rarely even do it on the iPad. It's only if I really need to be seeing what's going on, I'll add that onto the iPad. And the iPad is, what, twice the size of a Switch screen, if not more? So I'm certainly not going to be doing that on the Switch anytime soon. Just see a bend on that free kick. It's got the bend from the full version of Football Manager. I love the way you get bend. In this version of the game, we picked up a little bit of an injury there. Um, we can use the make sub button to just do that mid-game so we don't have to fiddle around the way we were before. Um, so if we want to bring on for him, there you go, Scott Laird is our best option. It highlights who your best option is. We can just bring him on, confirm our change, and substitution is made. We can scroll up and down our team using that right trigger. Oh, we can zoom in and out using the right trigger as well. That, I didn't even realise. We can zoom all the way out, and we can zoom all the way in as well Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can get a better view did we just concede a goal while i was fiddling around with an analog stick you don't get that on the pc do you goodness me i don't know um let's scroll back up so we can keep an eye on how everybody's doing rawson's not having the best of games which considering he's probably the best defender at the club three years into the future where i am in my save um it's a little bit alarming see he didn't start out any good Clearly, he just got good for me. We can't actually see the right wingers because of how far out I've zoomed. Let's just drop it back to there a little bit so we can have a proper look. And are we going to grab one more before the end of the game? Surely we're not going to concede another one. 3-2 is disgusting for a first... I know it's a first friendly, but like I say, I'd never heard of Frome before this match started. We can't go and lose to them. That would be hideous. They're actually keeping quite good control of the ball, which is a big worry. But there you go. It's back with Sanchez. And he plays it up to Williams, who, what's he going to do? Finds Morris. We've got zero players in the middle, though. This is the problem. Grubb actually gets there, which is qu I'm quite impressed with that. Somehow, we've managed to grab a goal from literally nothing. It's George Williams who scored it, because we know George Williams is a superstar anyway. And, I mean, I'll, I'll give him that. That was, that was quite impressive in the end. How Certainly how Williams made, all, made up all that ground, because there was nobody in the middle when the pass to Grubb came over. And Williams got in there to end up finishing it off. Morris has had a very good game as well. And all in all, 
you know, can't complain. I might actually keep this save going. I'm enjoying playing Forest Green and Nodding to Legend. It might be nice to see how different it is playing them from the start, and it will give me a give me a, a version, give me a save to play on the Switch as well, which is all good stuff. Like I said at the start of the video, if you do want to see me doing more stuff on the Switch version of the game, we need to get to at least a thousand likes on this video. I did do a one season save on FM Mobile last year because so many people asked for it. If we get enough requests. I'm always open to adding something else in. We could do a short little mini-series on the Switch if it's something you want to see. But obviously, I don't want to do it if you don't want to see it. So pop a like on there if you do. Or if you just enjoyed this video anyway, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more Switch-specific content on the channel. Um, but I think that just about wraps things up for this first look at the FM19 Touch version on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, like I say, make sure you leave that nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager content. All different versions of the game are covered on here now, so you can have a little poke around and see what takes your fancy. And thanks very much for watching.